Now that we know what row echelon form is and we've learned about equivalent systems, we could actually use certain rules to manipulate one system that may not be in row echelon form into an equivalent system that is in row echelon form. And remember, when something is in row echelon form, we can use back substitution to solve for the unknown variables and obtain a solution set that is valid for both the original system as well as the new manipulated equivalent system. So in order to change one system into an equivalent system that is in row echelon form, we have to abide by certain rules or equivalent system operations or elementary row operations. The first one is that we can interchange two rows. So for an example, I could interchange row one and row two. So the notation for this would be ri and this little double-headed arrow, R, J. And just as a disclaimer, I am using the character R to represent the row on which the equation is on. Now this notation, this R notation, will be helpful when we get into matrices, where we're talking about rows and columns. But for the sake of simplicity, when I say something like R1, I'm really referring to equation one, which would be this equation here. If I say R3, I'm referring to this equation here, which is equation three. So when we interchange two equations, we simply switch the two rows. So if I wanted to switch R1 and R2, I would just rewrite these equations and switch places or switch rows. Secondly, we can multiply a non-zero constant to an equation. And the notation for this would be some constant times Ri. So what this means is I can take any row, r1, 2, or 3, any equation, and multiply it by some number, some real number, other than 0. So I could take r2, or equation 2, and multiply it, let's say, by negative 1.5. Finally, the third rule is to add a multiple of one equation to another. And the notation for this would be rj plus some constant times another row, ri. So what this means is I could take some row or some equation, and I can add to it some constant C multiplied by some other row. So for an example, I could take equation three and I could multiply equation two times negative one, and that would be my new row three or equation three. And just as a little side note, only equation three is gonna be manipulated. Although we're still multiplying R2 or equation two by some constant, we don't actually change this in our system. We just do this for the sake of being able to manipulate another equation, in this case, equation three or R3. So let's try to get a better grasp of these rules or elementary row operations by actually changing this system of linear equations, which is not in row echelon form, into an equivalent system that is. So to start off, I can actually interchange row one and row two and I will get this new equivalent system of linear equations. I'll get x minus 3y plus 3z is equal to negative one, y plus 2z is equal to three, and finally negative 2y minus 3z is equal to negative five. And remember, all I did was interchange row one and row two. So I just took this row and this row and I switch their spots or their rows, right? So now we have this new equivalent system right here. It's still not in row echelon form, but I can do one other thing. I can take row three and I can add to it row two multiplied by some constant two. And that's gonna result in my new row three or equation three. So what does that mean? Well, row two is this one right here, right? So I can multiply that by two so it'll be two times y plus four z is equal to six, right? I just took two and I multiplied it with this equation. And then I could add to it row three and row three is negative two y minus three z is equal to negative five. So now if I added these two equations, I would get a new equation for r three. Well, negative 2y plus 2y is just zero, minus 3z plus 4z is just z, and finally negative five plus six is just one. So this right here is my new row three. And so now my new equivalent system of linear equations is x minus 3y plus 3z is equal to negative one, y plus two z is equal to three, 
and z is equal to 1. This is my new system of linear equations. It's an equivalent system because I manipulated the original system by following these three rules. So now you'll notice that this new system of linear equations is in row echelon form. And because it is, we can use back substitution to solve for x, y, and z. And we'll obtain a solution set x, y, and z that works for this system. And if it also works for the original system, and remember the original system was this equation or these equations in red, then we will have successfully solved this system of linear equations. So let's do that. Let's use back substitution to find what x, y, and z are. Well, z is easy because in the third equation, z is equal to 1. So z is equal to 1. Now if we plug z into this second equation, we'll get y plus 2 times z, which is 1, is equal to 3. And y plus 2 is equal to 3 y therefore is 1. So y is equal to 1. And now we can use these two values to plug into the first equation and we'll get x. So I'll do that right here. x minus 3 times y, which is 1, plus 3 times z, which is 1, is equal to negative 1. Well, x minus 3 and plus 3 is just 0, so that's equal to negative 1. x is equal to negative 1. So our solution set for this equivalent system of linear equations, which is in row echelon form, is x equals negative 1, y equals 1, and z equals 1. So now if we plug in these values, or this solution set, into the original system, which is up here in red, they should be valid. So let's check that. And before I do, I'm going to make room here to work like that. And remember, our solution set was x equals negative 1, y equals positive 1 and z equals positive 1. So if we were to plug these values into this system of linear equations, we should find that all of these equations will be true. So let's try it. Let's try the first equation. y plus 2z is equal to 3. Well, y is 1 plus 2 times z is 1 is equal to 3. Well, 1 plus 2 times 1, which is 2, is equal to 3. So 1 plus 2 is 3, and 3 is, in fact, equal to 3. So the first equation checks out. What about the second equation? x minus 3y plus 3z is equal to negative 1. Well, x is equal to negative 1 minus 3 times y, which is 1, plus 3 times z, which is 1. And that's equal to negative 1. So if we simplify this a bit, negative 1 minus 3 plus 3 is equal to negative 1. Well, negative 3 and 3 is 0, so negative 1 is equal to negative 1. That checks out. All right, how about the last equation? Negative 2y minus 3z is equal to negative 5. Negative 2 times y is 1, minus 3 times z is 1, is equal to negative 5. Well, negative 2 times 1 is just negative 2, minus 3 times 1 is just 3, and that's equal to negative 5. Well, yeah, negative 2 minus 3 is, in fact, negative 5, and that's equal to negative 5. So the third equation checks out. So the solution set, this one right here, that we obtained from the equivalent system of linear equations in row echelon form does in fact satisfy both of the systems. So therefore, those two systems are equivalent.